Welcome to part two of lecture one of aerospace propulsion. So now let's get into the technical content of today's lecture. So we're going to introduce rocket propulsion today. So a little bit of a, a review uh, maybe to begin with from uh, aerospace engineering fundamentals um, and then getting into uh, some new material. So rockets produce thrust by ejecting mass at a high relative velocity c um, and, and of course from Newton's second law the momentum outflow rate is the thrust force. Um, so the thrust f is the mass flow rate of uh, the propellant m dot times this velocity c and the velocity here is the velocity of the ejected mass once the pressure is no longer changing. We'll come back to that uh, in the next uh, couple of lectures to figure out exactly what that means. So we'll consider just a vertical launch rocket. And the governing equation here is something that we did see uh, last e uh, year in aerospace fundamentals. Um, and this is just a simple uh, differential equation. Um, and sort of our rocket is comprised right of a payload uh, to be at the top, sort of a propellant um, that, uh, that lives in the body, and then the engine uh, at the bottom. Now this exit velocity c is going to be a function of atmospheric pressure and altitude in general, and the gravitational acceleration is also a function of altitude, especially if we're talking about going to very, very uh, high altitudes in, in space. So in our rocket equation, we simplify by taking c and g to be constant. Um, and then we end up with a much simpler equation um, which we call the rocket equation that uh, the velocity minus the initial velocity is equal to minus times this c velocity which is that propellant exit velocity times the natural logarithm of uh, the mass as a function of time uh, over the initial mass minus gravitational acceleration times time. This is only accurate for a vertical launch. This last term, this gt term, would change if the launch isn't vertical. Now what the big thing that's neglected here is drag. So this tends to be a poor uh, prediction for small rocket performance, but it's, it's pretty accurate for very large rockets where the drag forces actually are not the dominant effects. One thing that's really important to understand here is that these v velocities here are need to be expressed in a different frame of reference than, than what we're, we're sort of used to, right? So, of course, the difference doesn't matter. Um, but in terms of what the velocity should be, right, the, they're, they're relative to a fixed point at the center of the Earth or whatever other object is causing our acceleration g. So a rocket sitting on a launch pad does not have v0 equal 0. It has v0 equal to the radius of the Earth times uh, you know, the, the angular velocity of the Earth time related to uh, some kind of trigonometric function related to whatever um, uh, lati uh, latitude you're at. So we can uh, write this non-dimensionally by bringing the c as a denominator to the other side. Now what velocity change we need is set by our mission requirements. Um, so for example, if we're trying to get something into low Earth orbit, right? Um, if we have, because of our assumption of, con if we make an assumption of constant mass flow from the engine, after some mathematical manipulation we can get the following. And so typically the v minus v naught over c, this would be known based on what our rocket is, um, and uh, what the uh, required sort of velocity change is. And so then the big free parameter we have is this a naught, uh, as well as the mass as a function of time. So what this a naught is sort of a design parameter. This is the initial acceleration of the rocket, and it's f, the, the, the thrust force divided by the initial uh, mass, and that had better be greater than g, or else this rocket's not going anywhere. Um, and so what this equation really is, is an implicit equation for the mass fraction mt over m0 as a function of time. The second term is a term call, uh, called gravity loss. Um, and because this is because it's the reduction in the velocity change that you obtain caused by overcoming gravitational effects. Basically the significance of this term uh, decreases as the initial acceleration a naught rises. So 
that gives rise to an interesting question. What should we pick for that initial acceleration? Should we make the initial acceleration as large as possible since it decreases gravity loss and therefore increase the maximum velocity v? What might be the consequences of doing that? Let's think about the impact on the rocket mass. So what I want you to do is think whether you're going through, uh, if you're going through this, this video, I want you to think about this for a few minutes and try to come up with an intuitive answer for yourself before you move on to the next part of the video.